In today's video, we will be talking about four different schools. These schools are separated into classes per se, um, one being the working class, two being the middle class, three being the upper class, and four being the capitalist class. The working class is the first group I'm going to talk about. The working class is, a, is considered blue-collared um, parents who work blue-collar jobs. Less than a third of the dads are skilled, and 15% of the dads are unemployed. Jobs are jobs that are common in this group is gas station, um, technicians, security guards, etc. Their income ranges below twelve thousand dollars. The middle class is a mixture of social classes. They're divided into three classes. I mean three groups. One being the blue collared, but they're considered the rich blue collared, collared, <laughs> the white collared such as um, people who work in office jobs, and the third being the um, middle, manage middle management people. All of these people make between 13,000 to 25,000, some make more. The upper income have typical jobs of cardiologist, interior designer, or even a lawyer. 90% of these schools are white. Family income ranges from 400, th I mean, who 400, 40,000 to 80,000 a year. Capitalist class is the fourth group that I'm gonna talk about. And their fathers tend to be top executives and many moms volunteer work. There is no minority of children and the income is between 100,000 and 500,000. I was asked to compare the two and the two that I chose, well, the two schools I chose are the affluent class and the executive class, which means that these are the upper income level in the capitalist class. Some similarities that I seen between the two are both schools are constantly pushing kids to get the right answers before giving up. For example, they um, push kids to just keep X, like keep getting, like keep trying until they get the right answer. They'll be like, um, try this way or reread this chapter. Um, look at this before just completely shutting them down and calling on someone else. Um, some differences that I saw was that one school, the affluent school, makes extreme efforts to do things that are outside the box and very creative, while um, the executive school sticks kind of to that um, study makes like practice makes perfect and doing essays and it's still very beneficial to the kids. Um, these schools have impacted students because the affluent school was very creative and a great way for kids to get creative and think outside the box. I think kids um, really enjoy doing those type of things such as um, doing science projects and making letters and mailing them out, for, but it shows their pro, um, pronunciation and their punctuation and the way they write sentences and if they're correct. Um, I think the executive um, impacts students because they push and increase, increase children's problem solving skills, putting two and two together to get the right answer and how they got it and their reasoning behind it. It really expands the child's mind. My next question was, what was surprising or shocking about the schools? The affluent school was really, one thing that was really surprising about the affluent school was the sarcasm and the judgment remarks. I read in a reading that sometimes teachers would be like, oh, well, that's not good enough, or um, you can need to redo this and stuff like that. And I think that um, that was surprising and shocking to me because um, for it to be an upper class, I would have thought that that's not things that you really say. Also, I thought that um, this was surprising or shocking because kids are creative and they're creative in their own ways. I think that comparing two kids, I mean, two, one kid's work to another kid's work isn't fair. Um, one thing that I saw that was surprising or shocking with the executive school was the no rules and kids could leave whenever they wanted. Um, they didn't have to follow the bell schedule. I think that they should be more strict in following directions with the kids and it um, instills discipline, which everyone needs. 
Um, some things that I think that each school should change is the floor school should be more involved in the reasoning and the problem solving behind everything that they do, even if it is creative, even if it is them putting sentences together um, from a book that they read. I think it should be, okay, you did this, but now come up to the class and explain how you got to this. So that way, then, even though they got it right, they might not know how they got it right. <laughs> I think that the executive school should enforce more rules and um, be more um, disciplined on the kids. They should be, uh, well, way more disciplined because they can um, gain stability. And um, I think that everyone needs that. Thank you.